And we're back. What's up, you guys? FightfulWrestling.com. You'll be able to hear Denise now. Had a little bit of tech <laughs> issues. Uh, <laughs> this thing changes my settings every single time that I, I do a show. And as you guys know, I do shows every single day. I did save your all super chats. Don't worry. Reminder, if you want your question or comment read on the air, donate a super chat any amount. Uh, but leave a thumbs up on this video and subscribe. We were talking to Denise Salcedo. Denise, who uh, was in L.A. Well, you're always in L.A., I guess. But, <laughs> yeah. But uh, you talked to a ton of Impact Wrestling stars ahead of Bound for Glory. Uh, what was that experience like for you? You know, it was really awesome because, you know, obviously I've been a fan of Impact for a long time. And when they made the announcement at the, tarp, at the top of the media day saying that they sold out Bound for Glory, I was like, dude, that is so awesome that they were able to sort of kick it off. You know, their first media day with Access. Why not kick it off with big news like that? So, yeah, I was able to talk to Scott, Josh Matthews, uh, Sammy Callahan, Brian Cage, Taya, who's always a pleasure. And it was so funny because when I saw Taya, right away she was like, where are all the women? There should be more women here in the media room. And I was like, exactly. There was just two, myself and another girl, and that was it. But we, we bonded over that. Well, that was great. You all are going to see a lot of her great interviews up. Uh, Sammy Callahan's already up. I dropped home with Jordan Grace. We have Brian Cage. We have Taya. We have Josh Matthews. We have just a, a ton of stuff up for Bound for Glory weekend. Make sure you guys check that out. A lot of that will be on our uh, on our subscription site early. FightfulSelect.com. That is the most direct way to support us. But hey, I am going to support you guys. I'm going to give you all a freebie. And this one, actually, uh, we can thank uh, we can thank Denise for this. If you all uh, want to check out a great series, the Luchaverse is an epic. New story world from the Mass Republic and Cheeto Comics featuring Rey Mysterio, the Lucha Brothers, uh, Ray Phoenix, Penta, Zero M, Solar, Conan, uh, even Tiny Bloss, one of my favorites. And you all can win an edition of it free. All five one shots are in one collection now. Retweet my tweet. It's my most recent tweet. If you're watching this after the fact, it ain't going to be. But it's worth scrolling down and checking out. Uh, we've already got tons of entries. We're going to give one away this week, one away next week. And hey, if you all want to kind of bypass all that, go over to the luchaverse.com, purchase a copy. They do some great stuff over there. Uh, Denise, I know you spoke highly of these people, so uh, I I'm happy to bring this to our viewers. No, I'm excited too. I got to look at the Luchaverse comics when I was at Expo Lucha, and they were incredible. Not just that, all the stuff Masters Public is coming out with, it's awesome. Yeah, guys, so go over, uh, show them some love. I uh, think a lot of them, the, the artwork is phenomenal. And, of course, tons of stars that you're familiar with or maybe you're not even familiar with if, if you're not hip to the, the Lucha history. But we've got WWE Raw to talk about tonight, October 14th. I got to say, Denise, I rather enjoyed this Raw. You know what? I was going to say about an hour, maybe the first two hours went by really fast. I looked at the clock and I was like, oh, I'm going to get start getting ready. I looked and I was like, oh my gosh, there's only an hour left of Raw. I need to start getting ready now. And so that should tell you, like, Raw went really fast went by really fast today. Um, I don't know how I felt about that ending, though, but we can talk about that when it's time. Yeah, um, I do have all of your super chats, by the way, guys. Just so you know, I screened them uh, before you all before we got cut off. Young Bibby says, do you think Carmella is the top baby face on SmackDown to challenge Bailey? What do you think the blockbuster trade is going to be? I don't think they know what the blockbuster trade is going to be yet, Denise. That's what I'm wondering. It was just so last minute to find that out. And I, for a while, I was like, wait, why are they doing that? But then I was like, okay, obviously, they want to have an incentive to go in and watch you know, the backstage show with Renee Young and Booker T. So I totally get that. But I don't know. Uh, he also says, do you think Carmella will be the top babyface on SmackDown to challenge Bailey?" It makes sense. I mean, we know that they w at least were real-life best friends for a while. Yeah, but I don't know how I would feel about seeing Car – I mean, for a while, but I know that we – like, I was, wasn't a big fan of Carmella being in that title picture or as champion back then. And I kind of like what she's been doing right now, so I was a little upset when they parted both her and our truth because I really liked their chemistry – so I don't know exactly how I feel about that. Hannah Moore says, apologize to King. He was right when he said firehouse funhouse on accident. Boy, was he ever. Aaron Jay's fan says, what was the surprise pick? I think Humberto Carrillo so early was probably a surprise pick. I mean, 
way before Ray, way before King Corbin. But hey, if you're if you're going this from a, a real sports perspective, a lot of upside for him. He's very young, uh, and and maybe they envision something for him. It's stuff like that though that didn't make any sense to me though. I agree. Like I I don't like certain people being drafted over other people because you got to think about it. Like the question that Fox and USA should be asking themselves is who is going to get me ratings, right? Isn't that the question that the networks would have? So you book the people, I mean sorry, you draft the people that you already know that they can draw or that they're a star power to bring on to your show. So certain people getting drafted over other people was a little bit interesting I think throughout the draft. Uh, Vincent Elsar said they're making Bray look like a dork. I don't have a problem with them making Bray Wyatt look like a dork. I have a problem if they make The Fiend look like a dork. To me, they're two separate people. Bray Wyatt is Mr. Rogers, like with, with a little bit of an attitude. The Fiend is something much different. What do you think of how they're portraying him so far? Well, that's exactly what I was gonna what I was gonna say about this ending was that I totally got what they were going for in terms of, you know, Seth Rollins is pissed, you know, he's not happy with what happened in Hell in a Cell. So, you know, he comes out and he's supposed to, you know, like like you said, burn it burn burn down the Firefly Fun House. But it didn't come through that way. I thought it kind of came through a little cartoonish. But I totally got once Bray Wyatt sort of was like, Why why are you doing this to me? I liked that portion of it because, you know, it separated those two distinct characters characters where it's like yeah the fiend is like you know this you know this evil monster or whatever has no remorse but bray wyatt he's this lovable uh you know he's like this innocent i i don't know if innocent's the right word but he's this innocent pure person that you know just wants to have fun and yeah he has this dark side but you know so i liked that aspect of it but i don't know it's kind of interesting how it all played well together i wasn't a big fan of the whole thing i like i like layers i'm interested in the layers we will talk about the draft picks themselves after we run down raw uh kind of like we did on uh the monday or the friday show rather so uh if you all are like oh when are you going to talk about the draft picks we'll be talking about those and and how we feel about them specifically uh, towards the end of the show. Uh, but Monday Night Raw kicked off, and like I said, I, I kind of enjoyed tonight's Raw. I thought a lot of it was just really good and really effective. There were still things that I, I didn't think made sense. Now I get it. Sasha Banks is hurt. She couldn't represent SmackDown against Becky Lynch. But it also, to me, did not make sense to have Charlotte Flair representing SmackDown for a few reasons. The brand split has just flat out not existed for a year. From them calling up all the NXT names and having them float around to the superstar shakeup and all that mess to the wild card. Like, it didn't make any sense to me why Charlotte would want to fight for SmackDown. And she even, like, kind of jokingly said, I don't want to be here. I don't want to fight you. I want to be your friend before she turned on Becky. Where, where are you on that? Because that was an issue that I had with Rollins and Reigns last week. Why are these guys fighting to represent a brand they might not be on 12 minutes later? Yeah, no, I was thinking about the exact same thing, but then I was like, okay, well, at least I know that we're going to get a good solid match out of these two. So then it kind of, the 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 technical the technicalities of it kind of escaped me, but I did like the way Raw started. And I did like the line that Charlotte was like, oh, you know, I want to be your friend, you know, because, you know, these two girls have been going at it, you know, for the what, like the past few months now. And so, you know, to have that line was pretty interesting. But either way, I just kind of thought, okay, well, at least it's going to be a nice, good opening match for Raw. And it was. They just have the, the most perfect chemistry with one another. It's so effective. It works every time they go to it. And still, every time I see them in the ring together, it feels special when they work. Yeah. Like, it just... I, go ahead. I was going to say, does it really feel special, though? Because I, it, it does in the sense of, you know, they're going to put on a good wrestling match. But in terms of, like, the hype, because we're seeing it so much, I kind of thought it hurt them to be on the same roster together. Maybe they should have been separated just so we can have a little bit of, you know, separate them for a while. Well, yeah, Charlotte definitely shouldn't be in the title picture after losing, even though she had a competitive match here. But, yeah, I see them as such effective stars. I mean, Becky is still so over and Charlotte just screams out marquee star to me. Like, everything she does, she does it like a winner. Like, there are very few that, that does that, uh, that are able to do that effectively. I appreciate the commentary team trying to explain why Charlotte should care to fight for SmackDown, but it doesn't work. Uh, Charlotte attacks Becky. They brawl. I love Charlotte bringing back, like, the head scissor stomps. That's such an effective heel move. 
Uh, she slings Becky into the turnbuckle, and she dominated Becky Lynch in this match. She was all flash, and it was Becky kind of kicking out of everything, Denise. Yeah, no, I really liked it. And I actually, I actually liked how the finish played out as well, where it kind of just came out of nowhere and kind of pissed off Charlotte, you know? Oh, yeah, I, and, and I like that. I mean, Boston Crab, Natural Selection, the big boot, a spear. Becky kicked out of everything and then pinned Charlotte with like this quick crucifix pin. And I like that because that's kind of a callback to WrestleMania. Uh, she didn't necessarily get the shoulders down on Rousey necessarily, but that is how she won the, the Raw Women's title. Now she beats the other woman in that match with the same type of pin. I like that. That was, that was a nice little touch that I thought that made a lot of sense. And uh, I, I thought there was some fun foreshadowing shadowing there, like Charlotte saying, uh, maybe we're going to fight forever. Maybe we're going to do this forever. I like having Charlotte and Becky Lynch on one brand, Sasha and Bailey on another to anchor it. It's just a little bit different. It's a little bit of an adjustment, and, and I like that pivot. Who knows if it'll last past tomorrow, but but what do you think of, of that as we got that information right after this match? You know what? Like, yeah, like I said, for me, I, I said this in the past show, like, I don't want to keep seeing, like, Ba- ba- Bailey and Sasha always paired up together and I think that's the same thing that's how I felt at the opening match for for uh, for Becky and for Charlotte so maybe I think I would have liked it the opposite way around you know maybe in- separate Becky and Charlotte separate Sasha and Bailey yeah I, I think that's maybe not a bad idea down the line but uh, we haven't seen the Sasha Bailey match between them on the main roster no, to that but it's been level. so it's been so teased for like I ever know. though. Like do you even still feel like excited about that though? I do feel like they completely wasted both of those women's 2018s. Like they teased there you it. Go. They teased it and they waited on those tag titles. Those tag titles should have been around at SummerSlam. Those two women should have won those titles at SummerSlam and should have had a full fall and winter run with them. Like, that was so such ridiculous bullshit that they waited for so long, and they just sat there. Because, it, also, they didn't have their match at WrestleMania. That match could have happened at WrestleMania last year. Yeah. No title or anything. Man, I, I had some issues with that. Ross Gould, exactly. Ross Gould said, WWE screwed up and booked Bray vs. Seth for Hell in a Cell. How do they fix their mistake? They booked the same match in Saudi. Uh, Seth in two matches at Saudi. Oh, wait. I mean, sands of time. Yeah, we're going to get to that. I That was a little confusing to me. Uh, there's a lot of logical issues here, but if Seth wants to work two matches, I guess there's nothing keeping him from it. Taryn Riddick says, since Fiend is getting a title shot at sands of time, do you think he's a part of this blockbuster trade? Again, Denise, I don't think they know, but it would not surprise me at all to see Bray traded over to uh, Raw, and maybe may- maybe we do get some of the women switched up a little bit. Dang, I don't know. That would be a big loss for SmackDown first off. You know, I was kind of looking at these rosters earlier while Raw was going on as pe- more names were being announced, and I'm like, you know what? Raw's looking a little stronger right now, and given that SmackDown is going to be on Fox, I kind of thought that they would put you know, the bigger stars, you know, more bigger stars on SmackDown. What I hope doesn't happen is like a 15-person trade because that kind of undermines the entire point of the draft. I'm like, why do we I sit- don't think so. I feel like maybe it's just a one a one trade. That's how I read it. Maybe, maybe, because they, they've done it in the past where they just like completely, like during these drafts where like three quarters of the roster switches and I'm like, what was the point? You get the same rosters, they're just on different brands now. Like, I, I don't want that to happen again. Um, yeah, no, yeah. Go ahead. And also the whole thing about like the free agent stuff. Like, some people were just automatically like put in, and I was like, wait, they should have at least said like, oh, I choose to go with SmackDown. I choose to go with Raw. So that was a little bit interesting as well. And I just saw that Drake Maverick tweeted out like, oh, I'm a free agent. So I was like, okay, so we're gonna see some follow up with this. Exactly when and how and. There were, there were a lot of wrestlers that had no idea what the deal was with them. Like, I talked to a few last week. There were some, that, well, there were some wrestlers that were rather upset. I spoke about it on the Fightful Select Backstage Report podcast. Subscribe now. But some were like, okay, they kayfabed us all week, but then they leaked their own draft order inadvertently ahead of time. So they knew where we were going to go, but they wouldn't tell us because they were afraid that we would leak it. So there were some people... A little pissy about that. What'd you think about this massage that Lana was getting by Bobby Lashley? 
Oh, God. I just tweeted, I'm not mature enough for this. I... <laughs> The first clip where she was just getting like the the, th the the foot massage and you know she's saying that she likes it harder and I was like okay I see what they're going with this but what else is gonna happen like something has to happen but what is it and how I'm gonna feel about how am I gonna feel about it and then the second clip which was a little bit after um, I when the mas the massage lady left you know I was thinking oh my god like who's watching her someone watching her is it gonna be Rusev is he like peeking up on her or something and then when Bobby Lashley comes in the towel I was like this is too much for me I cannot handle this like I just kind of felt that you know I feel like they're making you like you know, just uncomfortable, you know, with the whole situation. That's how I feel. I mean, it is a little funny. Oh, and I have to hand it off to Bobby Lashley's facial expressions. Those were gold. When he lifts up the towel and he makes, like, this face, I was like, stop it, someone. You clip that out. Make that a gif. Whatever. I need to see that everywhere. Yeah, that was the highlight of it to me was, was the facial expressions. Uh, we have a super chat. Somebody says, The Fiend versus Seth right now in the dark match. That's logic. I don't care about that. That's not even in canon. That doesn't even count. That's just something special for the live crowd. Drew Nicholas says, They have no idea what they're doing with Bray all of a sudden. How did it go from incredibly awesome every week to this? They hot-shotted it. They hot-shotted it when they didn't need to. They had a really, really great thing. And instead of... Their, WWE is really bad with timing a lot of times. And... There sometimes they're really effective with it. The the Viking Raiders tonight, perfect, perfect timing. Then there are times like we we reference Batista an awful lot. It ended up being perfect, but if you ever hear Triple H or Batista talk about that, uh, they talk about how Vince McMahon wanted to pull the trigger on that like five or six months before it even happened. So a lot of times it, it's that. What how how well or how much do you think timing plays a role into the Bray Wyatt thing? It plays a lot because, like I said, you know, for Hell in the Cell, there was no question he should have won that. And it should have been in a way that, you know, keeps his character moving forward and keeps him hot, you know. And, like, for example, if, you know, Crown Jewel, he wins in this false count anywhere's match, it's now going to be like, yeah, but so what? We can't erase what happened at Hell in a Cell, you know. So that's timing right there. It's kind of we've lost a lot of stock in the fiend bray wyatt after hell in a cell and now even after raw because i i was i was kind of not very happy with the whole raw, the way it ended just because i was like okay so now we're ending this firefly funhouse thing and you know yeah i don't know so that's a perfect example of how timing sort of works and affects it uh, somebody asked for my opinion on the charlotte and becky match i thought it was an awesome match i thought it was great the OC attacked the Street Profits backstage. Now, the Street Profits later said that they wanted a match with the OC tonight on Twitter, but too bad, I guess. That didn't happen. Uh, but we did get Andrade versus Ali. Zelina cuts a promo, calls the four horsewomen the four horse faces, then looks directly at Andrade, who is dating Charlotte Flair, IRL. <laughs> <laughs> even think about that honestly yeah. i didn't catch that at all i mean i catch the part where she said the the the, the when she called them horse faces but i didn't like think like oh she gave him like the, the glance oh man yeah. that's that's awesome <laughs> uh this is a great pairing in the ring zelina has been missed and i didn't even realize how missed she's been we've not get, got to see her cut promos maybe throw the occasional flying head scissors but She's really good, and you see why she accentuates his act so much. And Ali bumped his ass off for Andrade. Andrade ends up winning. Like Andrade threw Ali off the top rope into the post, triangled him in the ropes. Then uh, Ali gets a little bit of shine when Andrade took a t tumble over the top rope, and uh, Ali hit a tope con hilo over Zelina. I do have to say, Jerry Lawler was total dog shit in this match. He was horrible. Miserable to listen to, and it was uncharacteristic from the rest of the show. I thought he was solid elsewhere. Zelina hits a flying head scissors. Ali ends up getting pinned after a hammerlock DDT. What do you think of all of this? I just think that I really hope Andrade gets a good, sustained run on the show. You know, we've seen them, you know, kind of push him, but then stop. And then we're going to restart that again and then stop and restart that again. And I kind of feel like I just really want to see that actually 
go at its full potential, whatever that may be. I just want to see that continue. You know, we've been seeing him. You know, he's been looking pretty good the last couple of weeks on Raw. So I hope we continue to see that. Yeah, this I match like, was good too. This match, for what it was, it was good. Yeah, I liked it too. It was a showcase for Andrade. I think Ali is going to do very, very well. Everybody I talk to likes him, and I, I, I know that a lot of people are like, "Oh, well, of course." I, I can't tell you how rare that is in wrestling, where nobody has anything bad to say about somebody that I ask about. So that that's kind of cool. For Ele- Andrade or for Ali? Sorry. For Ali, but I mean Andrade. Ali, yeah. here, here's the thing. I mean, Andrade doesn't speak English, so a lot of people don't have a lot of constant interaction with him that I speak to. But, I mean, that's a, I, I gained such an incredible measure of respect for Andrade. He showed up at Toronto Media Day, was not even advertised, just showed up and did dozens of interviews in a language that he's trying to still learn and gave you as much time as you wanted. Like, that would be horrifying to me. That would, like, the thought yeah. of that, and I mean... Everybody there, except for, I think, one crew. I think one crew was Spanish language first. Uh, but, like, he, he taught, he gave time to everybody and was great and was really personable. Man, that guy is doing everything it takes. I was, I was told that uh, when he asked what he could do, he was told, learn English. And that's what he's doing, so... No, that's smart because he wants to be seen as somebody that the company can trust, you know, and somebody that the company can look for, can look to, to represent them and, you know, be Hispanic, but speak English and be able to, you know, promote them well. And when that guy has his confidence, you can tell, and he gets downright special, like really special. Shane Haas says, any news on Morrison? If he signed, when will he debut? I don't know when he'll debut, but... uh, I mean, I've heard everything that, that has been reported that he's been signed and that people in the company told me he was too. Zach Connor said this big trade should look something like this. Raw gets it Bray in exchange for Drew McIntyre and a second round pick in the 2020 draft. I would be okay with that, but there is no chance, Denise, that they remember that in next year's draft and actually do it. <laughs> that's true. That's true. It'd be like, oh yeah, it's good for now, but what about later? Yeah, no way we get that. Uh, Eloquent says, what's the chance WWE grants Mike Kanellis his release? Mike Kanellis publicly asked for his release. Assuming it's real and not a work, I think that he's got a better chance than a lot of people do. I mean, WWE has barely used him and then did for this most recent angle, and I thought he did well in it. But you think there's a chance? Because lately they've been hanging on to people. I want to know, like, what are your thoughts when it comes to people publicly posting this up on Twitter? You know, because if someone publicly says, you know, I asked for my release, I want out. It's such an easy way for the fans of that person to go after said company and be like, oh, well, you got to let this person out because they're unhappy, you know. But at the same time, it's still a business contract, you know. So it, it comes to me, it makes me wonder, like, if. Just because you post it out on social media, does that mean you should be granted your release? Like, how does that all work? Because, you know, we saw this, you know, with Killer Cross and Impact, and, you know, how that thing got. And I just, like, wonder, like, if you go out there and you publicly post it up on in, on in, on social media, is that the easiest way to get out of a contract? Like, didn't, that, I'm just curious Didn't about work that. for Luke Harper at all. Didn't oh, work for him. True. Which, I mean, I he figures into WWE's plans a lot more than Mike does. But... Mike's done everything asked of him and got in really, really good shape, too. And, I mean, worst case scenario, he's getting paid good money for five years. I mean, that that's a good worst case scenario for him. But I, I, don't th- I don't think they'll give him his release, but I think he's more likely to get it than some. Do I have your attention now? Says, how about those 2K20 graphics? They look like PlayStation 2. Those are horrible. Did you see those today? I saw a few screenshots, but I don't think I paid much attention to them. Wow, they're so bad. Like, so I'm not going to pretend I'm like it's super hip to gaming, but you know how they do the face scans, right? Yeah. So they have like a 2019 face scan of Kurt Angle with his 2001 hair. What? So he's got like the jet black hair and the haircut, but his face is old. <laughs> oh no. Molly Why would they do that? <laughs> Molly Holly clearly wasn't face scanned at all. Like it's it's rough looking. Rough looking. Wow. 
Well, the Viking Raiders are the new Raw Tag Team Champions. They beat Rude and Ziggler to win the titles. I thought we were going to get a squash right out of the gates, but the, the common point I've been bringing up on a show where a lot of people struggle to get over, Viking Raiders are over. They've got it with them. They're, they're, people like to see them. They like what they're doing. The, the sustained, these guys are going to beat everybody act is working. I think that's good. I think you keep them strong. I think you... Keep them beating everybody until it's time to either beat them and make somebody else or turn them heel. I think you ride this wave, Denise. What would you think of them winning the titles? It's funny because it's the uniqueness of it. Like what they're doing out there, it's unique. It's different. It's fun. People really like that. They got power, agility. And it's funny because, you know, Ivar, for the most part, he does, you know, a very similar, you know, set of what he does in the ring. But yet every single time he does what he does, everybody's impressed. And that's just like, it was one of the things I was thinking about when I was watching their match today. And, I don't remember the last time there was this huge pop for the tag team titles changing hands, you know, on Raw. So I was just like, you know what? Good for them. I'm so excited. This was the perfect timing because if they would have lost today, it would have just been like, not a good idea at all. Like this was the time for them to win for sure. I mean, we kind of thought this last week where we even said like, oh, should this have been for the titles last week? But perfect timing this week. They had to win. They just had to. I was fearful that they would hold off till Sands of Time and then do the title switch there, and I didn't think that was the right. They that happens so much where they're like, "Oh, we'll DQ. Oh, we'll DQ." Well, they're they're oh. gonna get their match at the pay per view. I'm so glad they didn't. Uh, mm-hmm. Eric is really good at playing the babyface in peril, but then just dominating people. They went through the barricade. Uh, there was a spinebuster zigzag and a famaster, but. Ivar breaks up a pin after a glorious DDT. Like, Eric, Eric was going to get pinned there. But they win it with the Viking experience, which almost went terribly wrong. Did you see that? Yeah, I, did. I noticed that. That was that was almost really horrible, but they saved it. It ended up being great. I love them winning this title. Perfect timing, yeah, it Denise. wasn't gonna it wasn't gonna hurt Dolph or Rude. Like it just wasn't gonna hurt them at all. It was gonna hurt the Viking Raiders. And like right now, if you have something that's hot, like hold on to that, man. Hold on to it. Speaking of perfect timing, I'm gonna tell you guys about one of my favorite secret weapons for learning new things and getting ahead when I'm low on time. Blinkist. It's hard to find time to sit down and read and learn more, especially when you don't have all that free time. You can't read or work on personal development. But Blinkist.com slash Fightful has you covered. That's B-L-I-N-K-I-S-T. It's a really unique uh, app. It works on your phone, your tablet, your web browser, really everywhere. It takes the best key takeaways, the need-to-know info from thousands of nonfiction books, condenses them down into just 15 minutes that you can read or listen to. Uh, successful people read a lot, they learn a lot, they develop a lot, and Blinkist is made for busy people like that and like you who want to get the main points of a book quickly so you can start using that info right away. I can tell you guys, I have struggled slash been blessed with ADHD my entire life, so my attention span isn't always there. Blinkist.com slash Fightful really helps that. It helps condense that information, feed it to me, get it, and I can use it. And over 8 million people are using Blinkist right now. It has a massive, growing library from self-help, business, health, history books. Blinkist has the latest titles from bestsellers list, as well as the classic nonfiction titles that you've always meant to read, meant to read, rather, but didn't have time to. Stuff like The Seven Habits of Highly Effective People, The 4-Hour Work Week, uh, Start With Why by Simon Sinek. That is a fantastic one. Go to Blinkist.com slash Fightful and get a free 7-day trial. And then if you like it, when you're done, you save 25% off when you sign up at Blinkist.com slash Fightful. Go show them some love. Uh, they are great supporters of the podcast, and I really, really dig their service. We got hit up by a similar service, I want to say, about a year ago. I checked them out. I tried it. It wasn't for me. Blinkist was for me. Blinkist.com slash Fightful. I gave it a go, and I've really enjoyed it. Uh, when I'm going to the gym or when I'm at the gym, I check out their titles. I think you guys are going to dig it. Blinkist.com slash Fightful. Thank you to The Mountie for a super chat. $1 Canadian, which converts to about $0.20 USD or $0.02 LA. 
<laughs> that's the conversion. Oh, man. That's the LA conversion rate for you. Uh, you don't even want to know. Don't my, even want to know. Oh, my brother. My brother lived there for like the last 15 years. So I would hear all about it. Uh, have you seen our gas prices? Not to oh, distract, yeah. but have you seen them? I paid $5 almost for get per oh. gallon this past week. And you, you got to drive two hours anywhere. Alistair Bad. Black defeated Eric Young. Eric Young on Raw, finally. This was his first Raw match ever. What? Really? First Raw match. He had only been in the 24-7, like, the, the scramble to get the title. No matches. Isn't that amazing? That's just weird to me because how do you have a guy like that and not know what to do with him? Well, like he's I so would talented. Want a guy like that on my roster. He's so in talented and entertaining. Yes. He can he can work singles, uh, tag team trios, stable, serious comedy. He can do a little bit of everything. Cruiserweight, heavyweight, he can do all that stuff. Well, Alistair Black beat him. Beat him with that dragon sleeper. Any thoughts on this one? Oh man, I just think that with Alistair. He's just somebody that I want to see go very far. So I kind of feel like, you know, keep having him showcased on here, you know, sort of keep going with him. They they just can't, they can't, they have to know what to be able to do with him because he just has the whole package. The, everything that you want in a wrestler, that's Aleister Black. So I really, really hope that we see something, you know, big with him. And I feel like they're heading in that direction from what we've been seeing the past few weeks. Ricochet defeated Shelton Benjamin. Shelton gets a good back suplex, a free fall flapjack, but Ricochet fights back. Lands on his feet on, on a top rope belly-to-belly -belly superplex. Hits the recoil and gets the win. This is a lot like the match we just talked about. This was a showcase match for Ricochet to kind of get people to say, hey, here's Ricochet. He won a match. Great person to work with, too. Shelton Benjamin and him, you know... Man, had had Ricochet been around during like Shelton Benjamin's peak or, you know, vice versa, you know, I feel like they could have had a really good, a really good thing going for both of them. The Mountie sends another super chat, says, any word on the fate of Ramblin' Rabbit and Huskus the Pig? I'm going to guess they're dead. But, I mean, is anybody ever really dead in WWE? I don't know. Maybe Al Wilson will pop up in Firefly Funhouse. That's what I, I expect. Uh, legit R.I.P. Uh, Al Wilson. The man actually passed away. Uh, not trying to make light of that, but contract signing time. Jerry Lawler brings out Braun Strowman and Tyson Fury. Did you see the press conference Friday? It was terrible. You know what? I missed it because I was working that yeah, day. You're right. I it, wanted to go. I was so bummed when I found out. I found out like three days before that it was going to happen. So I was like, oh, man. Yeah. Well, it was bad, and you're very lucky you didn't go. They delivered, really? everybody delivered really terrible scripted promos. Among the wrestlers, Brock Lesnar cut the best promo. That That's wow. saying something. However, tonight, Fury was a little less scripted. Strowman says that Fury came to steal his spotlight and further his career, but Fury put over Strowman quite a bit. He was like, I came here because I wanted to see the guy that was flipping over trailers and and semi-trucks and all this stuff. And everybody's talking about you. And he kind of alluded, I want people to talk about me, not about you. He cut a pretty good promo, but then it got weird. Like, Strowman broke the table, and Fury pretended he couldn't break a pen, and then he broke the pen. Huh? I what just was? kind of felt like this was a little bit... I didn't... I felt it was a little disappointing. I was expecting more intensity, more like, oh, I'm really looking forward to these guys going at it, you know, at Crown Jewel. There was something missing. I'm not exactly sure what, because I did like the part where he was saying, you know, my kids are big fans of yours, but I want them to, you know, you know, you know to be, you know, not be looking at you that way. So I just think that something was missing. Buddy Murphy defeated Cedric Alexander. Uh, they just have a ton of great counters. Cedric takes a crazy bump off of a springboard spot. Uh, Meteora hits for Buddy, which Vic never seems to call, which is kind of odd. But Murphy had some great offense. He went big knee, tope con hilo, but then he got hit with a really hard suicide dive. When I see a lot of suicide dives in WWE, it looks like somebody's just, just galloping through the ropes, leaning out, and then kind of lightly shoving somebody <laughs> like it, it looks like they would have been better off just shoving somebody from the outside when Cedric Alexander did this one 
it hit really hard, and I appreciated that. Uh, when you see stuff like that, do you think that should be reserved for people who do it like this, or are you okay with kind of everybody making it their own? I mean, I think that would be the same thing for like everything, right? If someone does something really well, then you can argue the same exact thing. Then maybe that person should be the only one who does it, you know? Um, I mean, obviously, it's more spectacular when someone who does know how to do something does it. But at the same time, it's like, oh, well, you can't really just say like, oh, you shouldn't do that because you're not good at it or whatever. But I think that the fans are smart enough to realize or, you know, just visually see that someone can do something better than another person, regardless if they do it a bunch. I notice you have a pen in your hand. Are you about to break it? Oh, no. I was just playing with it. for. Uh, I think that you're trying to intimidate your Sands of Time <laughs> opponent. I think that's what's going on here. You're going to pretend that you can't break it, and then you're going to break it in half. And that's the end of the contract <gasps> signing. Oh, man. There you go. Buddy Murphy hits a super kick into the corner. Sit down power bomb. Murphy's Law gets the win. I love the Murphy's Law. Uh, I have an interview up with Buddy Murphy where he talks about developing that move. Go check that out, guys. Oddly enough, like out of all those Toronto interviews, his did like the second best traffic. Like better than Braun Strowman or Kofi Kingston or all these people, except for Becky Lynch. Becky kind of crushed everybody. Buddy Murphy getting a new leash or yeah, a new lease on life over here on Raw. Do you think it will be effective? Do you think they'll they'll use him to the degree in which he, he's capable of? Well, they keep calling him. What do they keep saying? That he's like the best kept secret. Yes. So if he's the best kept secret, then, you know, if you have that, then use it. I feel that both of these guys are two guys that, you know, we both know are extremely talented in the ring and maybe just having gotten that, you know, extra something to really make them a star on the main roster. I think Buddy Murphy is on his way to becoming that like slowly, but he's getting there. And it's just like, how can you not when someone's impressive in the ring? You can't help but to automatically be interested in them. Exhibit A, the Viking Raiders, and I think that we can continue seeing that with Buddy Murphy and with Cedric Alexander, both respectively. We had the Kabuki Warriors taking on Natalia and a mystery opponent. I've been asking for this team for like a month, and it took them going to separate brands before I got it. Natalia's like, oh, who can I who can I have as my partner? Somebody's pushed me to the limit. Lacey Evans, and I've been saying, damn, you know what? Having a veteran to team with Lacey Evans would make a lot of sense. Well, it did. I thought this match was pretty good. It could have been a little bit shorter, but the first thing I noticed, like, well, first off, I want to know, what were your thoughts on this? Because I saw you raise some concerns a little bit on social media. Yeah, well, I kind of thought to myself, you know, Lacey Evans, and now she's coming in with Natalia. Does that mean she's a baby face? Because I feel that she was just elevating her game as a heel. And, you know, we saw these girls, you know, go at it for, what, two, three weeks in a row uh, recently. And now all of a sudden they're teaming up together. And, yeah, she made her go the distance and all of that. But I just kind of felt like the I felt the crowd didn't know how to react to Lacey Evans because I felt the crowd was, you know, not really, like, you know, tip-top for this match. So I – Think that they didn't know how to react to it and it makes me wonder too like what exactly is going to be happening here with Lacey Evans because I feel I was just really getting the hang of her you know being this heel being like you know always you know these little nasties and all of the stuff that she's been doing she's been getting in better in the ring character wise all of that so why make this change I don't know if her teaming with Natalia automatically says this change is being made or not. I mean, for all I know, next week she can come back and still be the same person. But that was a little confusing to me. I'm okay with the, the baby face heel dynamic. It ended up working out really well for Alexa and Nikki, uh, where they, they one was kind of a baby face, one was kind of a heel, and they ended up working out great. Sting and Luger as baby face and heel are two of my favorites of all time, one of my favorite teams ever. Over on AEW, you've got Cody and MJF who have that dynamic too. So I'm all right with it. And like I saw Alex Palowski, uh, our former Raw co-host, say, why would they do this? Well, money, opportunity, titles. That's that's why. Because titles lead to more money. Uh, opportunities lead to more money and title. All that stuff. It, it goes hand in hand, and they, they want to be successful. By the way, a cheap plug right now, guys. FightfulSelect.com. It's the most direct way to support us. Had the Backstage Report podcast up today. But the pilot edition of Alex Palowski's Sour Graps went up. Uh, we are going to kind of refine that. He'll have his full setup soon. Uh, that is the first tier that you all can subscribe to. It'll be up as often as he wants to do it. But if you want to... 
Hey guys, sorry for the abrupt disconnection there. I was plugging Alex Pawlowski on Sour Graps on FightfulSelect.com. That's where you can go if you want to see somebody completely trash the world of wrestling. Some of you guys are into that, uh, so make sure you guys check out FightfulSelect.com. It'll be up as often as he want, wants to do it. Now, for the reason for the ab abrupt cut was uh, Spectrum had uh, decided to do scheduled maintenance right when we were doing our show, apparently. But, um, yeah, it kicked us off, so I'm going to have to Frankenstein this episode together. Uh, some of you who watch it live will see a bit of a different show, so if the, the view count is a little bit wonky, uh, that's why we lost, lost pretty much all of our live viewers through this method. But I wanted to kind of finish up on that. The Kabuki Warriors stiffed the hell out of Lacey Evans. This was very good stuff. I think they're going to end up getting over effectively that way. If they're able to do this kind of bullying style, the way that they do things, I think that'll work out. Unfortunately, we do not have Denise for this last part of the show, but I wanted to give you all the WDB draft results. So they did round one. Raw picked Seth Rollins, the universal champion. That makes a lot of sense to me. Makes a whole lot of sense to go ahead and pick him. Uh, SmackDown counter with WWE champion Brock Lesnar. Uh, that makes sense, too. I mean, I could see why Raw wouldn't want to pick him, considering you don't know how many dates he's going to have. Charlotte Flair is picked at number two for Raw. So uh, that, that's kind of their counter. So Charlotte Flair gets picked before the woman that beat her for the SmackDown title. And it didn't seem like, coincidentally, either brand was interested in selecting someone who had a title in the other brand, which I thought was a little weird. I thought would have been a good quote-unquote trade bait, so to speak. SmackDown's next selection is The New Day, which is a three-for-one. Makes a lot of sense. Raw in the first round takes Andrade and Zelina Vega. I thought that was a good way to put them over. In the next round, women's tag team champions Asuka and Kairi Sane get picked, the Kabuki Warriors. Uh, they did clarify, and good on WDB for clarifying right out of the gate. Women's tag titles are still cross-branded, but you're able to uh, retain Asuka and Kairi Sane on Raw if they do lose those titles. Daniel Bryan was picked for SmackDown. Kind of weird. They said, SmackDown's getting eco-friendly. And I'm like, he's been on that brand. What the hell? Rusev picked next for Raw. Okay. Uh, Bailey finally selected by SmackDown. I thought that was a little deep, but I mean, some of the people that were picked before her on SmackDown, understandable. Brian, New Day, Lesnar. However, the Rusev and Andrade ones, that was a little bit confusing. Over on Raw, Aleister Black gets picked. He had a good showing tonight. They counter with, uh, actually, that was the end of the round, Aleister Black. So Cedric Alexander gets picked right out of the gate. Number seven uh, overall for Raw. This uh, allows SmackDown to pick Intercontinental Champion Nakamura, which uh, also brings Sami Zayn with him. Sami Zayn did a good job of this as well. He mentioned on uh, on Twitter that he had orchestrated a thing to where he was going to have to go to whatever brand uh, that, that Nakamura went. And I thought that was easy. That was simple. It made a lot of sense. Go ahead and do that and and just just put them together. Make it like a contractual demand. I like that. You see you see contractual demands go down in football all the time. The surprise of the draft draft. Number eight, Humberto Carrillo. This is before Ray. It's before a 24-7 champion. It's before Joe. Before Carmella, the Miz, Rudin Ziggler, Ali, King Cor all these people. That's unusual. We've not really seen anything of him. And the extent that I've seen of him in big shows has not been good. Uh, outside of 205 Live, it hasn't been promising. But we'll see how it ends up. Cheers. Ali selected next for SmackDown, which leads to Raw taking Eric Rowan. Cool. Uh, Luke Harper was not selected in this draft. Up next for SmackDown, Dolph Ziggler and Robert Roode. Uh, actually, Buddy Murphy got selected right before them. I like that. He got a showcase here as well. Then Ziggler and Roode get picked. Then, Jinder Mahal. I guess you can say, okay, he's 33. He's a former WWE champion. Lots of upside. We'll see. We'll see. Hope he is feeling better, though, all things considered.
Carmella goes over to SmackDown. You can kind of s- assume they would do that. They they don't like to split up couples these days as as best they can. They used to do that shit just for shit and shits and giggles, and I'm glad that they don't anymore because it was real dumb. So uh, good for Carmella. She's going over to SmackDown. Might be one of the top baby faces on that brand too, depending on how this trade all unfolds. You also have WWE 24-7 champion R-Truth. So now they're split up. R-Truth and Carmella are split. Kind of surprising. Other picks for SmackDown. The Miz, King Corbin, Shorty Gable, and Elias. Now, Shorty Gable was in Friday's pool, not picked. So I just assume that whoever was in that pool was also eligible tonight, even though that was not how it was stated by WWE. It was very frustrating that they didn't. They said anybody not picked in in the eligible pools is a free agent. All right, that's cool. It didn't make sense to have Gable picked after some of the people they picked, and there were people. Oh, it's the work. It's the work. Yeah, make some fucking sense of it, please. Uh, Elias got picked, and then over on the Raw side, Akira Tozawa also in Friday's pool. Samoa Joe, Shelton Benjamin, Rey Mysterio, Titus O'Neil, Liv Morgan. We're gonna have full roster set up. Soon, I think I'm going to wait until after the trade to kind of put that in. But um, we'll have that up in our resources section. We do have a full draft page up. Again, sorry for the technical issues tonight. Uh, The OBS issue was in my control. The outage issue was not in my control. Uh, You all can send your angry tweets to Spectrum on Twitter about that. But leave a thumbs up on this video and subscribe. Make sure you guys check out Fightful Select. I know some of you miss Alex Palowski. Some of you say that. If you miss him so much, go subscribe. <laughs> FightfulSelect.com. Thank you guys so much. Until next time, we're out.